Okay. Okay, are we ready to go, everybody? I'm going to call our meeting to order and welcome everyone to our meeting tonight. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for sharing your evening with us instead of going out to dinner. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a, a roll call by our city clerk, Kathy Valdez. The record shall reflect that all members are present with the exception of Councilmember Rigby. Our Pledge of Allegiance tonight will be led by Councilmember Deputy Mayor Franklin. Okay. In accordance with the Brown Act, I'd like to announce that as a result of convening simultaneous meetings, the members of the Buena Sanitation District will receive compensation of $147.75 for the district meeting pursuant to Buena Sanitation District Ordinance 2006-1. The next thing is the approval of our agenda by our city manager, Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. There are no changes this evening. Okay. We do have one presentation, but they aren't here yet, so we're going to kind of go on and then we'll um, go to our presentation when they get here. So, um, next thing on our agenda is our consent calendar, and the recommendations on the consent calendar will be enacted in one motion, unless an item is removed from the, calend from the calendar. Any member of the public can remove an item by submitting a request to speak card to the clerk secretary. Items removed from the consent calendar will be considered immediately following the adoption of the calendar. So, there's items C1 through C3 are the items on our consent calendar. So, um, Councilmember Aguilera. I'll make a motion to accept the consent calendar or consent items as uh, presented. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. That motion passes unanimously with um, Co um, Councilmember Rigby absent. She's sick tonight. So, um, The next thing on our agenda is our first public hearing, uh, and this is a public hearing to receive testimony regarding an application for FTA Section 5310 grant funds from the California Department of Transportation. The Director of Recreation and Community Services, Theron... I see John. I see John Conley there. I'm like, wrong people. Theron Dickman will introduce the item. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having us this evening. Uh, here tonight to present a uh, public hearing for this particular item is our program uh, manager and senior center uh, manager, Donna Meester. It's a public hearing to see if you have any questions. We're open to answer those. What you have before you is just a public hearing to see if there are any nonprofit agencies available to provide the transportation services that we are requesting in our Caltrans application. Okay, so um, seeing no, do I have any speakers? I don't have any speakers on this. No speakers on this. Um, I would look for a motion. Councilmember Aguilera. I'll make the motion. I'm Deputy Mayor Franklin. Make a motion. I would second. And um, do we have any facility for people to sign up tonight or get more information about becoming a volunteer? Yeah, if they'd like to volunteer with the city, they can sign up uh, through our website or call us. I can, I can call the Senior Center specifically if they'd like to volunteer to be a volunteer driver for the Out and About program, and they can do that. Excellent. And did you close a public hearing, John? Councilmember Oh, I'll close it, yeah. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Okay. With that, then um, please cast your votes for that. That motion passes unanimously with Councilmember Rigby excused. Okay. So I don't see our. You're not here yet? Okay. 
The next public hearing, this is a public hearing to receive testimony regarding um, P16-0180, the enclave at Delphi's Corner Project. And um, Community Development and Engineering Director John Conley will introduce this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Michael Ressler, our principal planner, will be giving the presentation. Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. The uh, application before you tonight is the Enclave at Delphi's Corner. The project number is P16-0180. The entitlements before you tonight include a specific plan amendment, a site development plan, condominium housing permit, as well as a tentative subdivision map. Staff does note that the City Council has full discretion over this project as a result of the specific plan amendment. The subject site is 16.1 acres. The site maintains three legal parcels and the site is currently vacant. Surrounding land uses include a commercial shopping center to the north as well as a school, uh, single family homes to the east and to the south, as well as a commercial shopping center to the west across East Vista Way. The general plan land use designation for the site is medium density residential. The medium density residential land use allows for up to 10 dwelling units per acre. Staff does note the site has, is also located within the East Vista Way Foothill Drive Opportunity Area. The current zoning of the site is a vineyard specific plan. Uh, the entitlements before you tonight includes a specific plan amendment that would uh, comprehensively update the vineyard specific plan and retitle the document, the Enclave at Delphi's Corner specific plan. The Enclave at Delphi's Corner specific plan would include specific development standards for this site and this site alone. Those development standards would include permitted uses, building height, lot coverage, setbacks, as well as parking standards. The project before you tonight includes 124 condominiums on 16.1 acres, which equates to 7.7 .7 dwelling units per acre. The project also includes open space amenities, parking lot improvements, as well as other site improvements. Uh, access to the site would be provided by a private driveway located along Foothill Drive. Site amenities would include a pool, uh, restroom building, seating area with fire pit, tot lot, as well as turf area. The site plan indicates the development would include 24 two-story condominium buildings, uh, each building ranging from three to seven condominiums per building. Access to the site would be provided by a new 32-foot wide signalized driveway along Foothill Drive, located at the northeast corner of the site as well as a secondary emergency access point located on the southwest corner of the site along East Vista Way. The Enclave at Delphi's Corner specific plan requires a total of three parking spaces for each three bedroom unit. Based on that calculation, the site's required to maintain a total of 372 parking spaces. The submitted site plan indicates that the site would provide a total of 372, which would meet the uh, specific plan requirement. The staff does note that the project has been designed to meet the citywide multifamily residential parking standards as well. Amenities within the complex would include a centralized recreation area, which would include a pool, fire pit, seating area, as well as restroom facilities. Other site amenities would include a tot lot as well as a walking trail. The proposed condominiums would be three bedroom, two and a half bath, the condominiums would range from 1,489 square feet to 1,840 square feet. Each condominium would maintain a two-car garage and approximately 160 cubic feet of storage space. The condominium buildings would be two stories, a maximum height of 27 foot 2 inches. The condominiums have been designed around a Mediterranean architectural style. The exterior of the buildings would be enhanced with exposed rafter tails, corbels, finials, medallions, accent tiles, as well as window shutters. The buildings would maintain hip and gable style roofs. And when completed, the complex would maintain four distinctive earth tone colored schemes. The existing general plan land use designation would allow for 10 dwelling units per acre. The proposed project would include a density of 7.7 .7 dwelling units per acre. Uh, in regards to the enclave at Delphi's corner specific plan, the project has been designed to meet all applicable development standards, including building height, parking, open space, as well as landscaping. 
A mitigated negative declaration has been prepared for this project. The mitigated negative declaration has been circulated and was circulated between December 9th through December 28th. Uh, mitigation measures identified within that document include biological resources, cultural resources, hazards and hazardous materials, noise as well as traffic. Staff received four comment letters. Uh, staff prepared responses to those comment letters and the responses were based on environmental analysis. Traffic mitigation uh, within the mitigated negative declaration uh, include a new southbound right turn lane on Oak Drive as well as a signalized intersection on Oak Drive and the project driveway. Uh, the project's also required to pay its fair share for an installation of a traffic signal on Oak Drive and Foothill Drive, as well as the project's required to pay its fair share for the installation of a westbound left turn lane, second left turn lane, at the intersection of East Vista Way and Foothill Drive. The developer would be required to pay a total of $512,250 in street and signal development impact fees. And other site improvements, off-site improvements include street widening as well as associated uh, right-of-way improvements along East Vista Way as well as Foothill Drive. This project went before the Planning Commission on January 17th of this year. Uh, at the conclusion of that meeting, the Planning Commission recommended approval. The vote was 6-0. Uh, the Planning Commission included additional conditions within the resolution before you tonight, which uh, relate to pedestrian access, parkway adjustments, construction equipment management, as well as historic recognition of the site. With that, staff is recommending the City Council adopt an ordinance approving a specific plan, as well as resolutions approving a mitigated negative declaration, a site development plan, condominium housing permit, and a tentative subdivision map to construct 124 townhomes on the subject site. That concludes staff's report. The developer is here to provide a brief presentation. At the conclusion of that presentation, staff as well as the developer is here to answer any questions you might have tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have um, speakers if you wanna, uh, should I go through those first if that's okay? Um, the first one is our applicant is James O'Malley. Waiting for the green light here. The thumbs up. Good enough. Thank you. Hello, uh, James Lomalli. Uh, I re represent Shop Off Realty and the applicant on this uh, matter in front of you this evening. Um, I want to make sure that uh, all of you here know that, and staff know that we uh, concur with the staff report and the conditions that were set and discussed with the Planning Commission. Um, we're in full agreement with them, every word of them. We think it's a, a wise decision, a wise review on their part, so we, uh, we agree with it. I have a short presentation, and really the theme of this presentation, because I don't want to repeat all the hard work that city staff has put together on this application, but it's really about how the process worked and how the site matured. There's a picture right there that depicts the property back in 2007 and how it was approved previous. Obviously, 59 single-family homes and 46 work-live units. If you look closely, the south part of the property really wasn't um, uh, mitigated or preserved. In that matter of time, it's been discovered that that's a cultural resource component of the property. It's fully preserved, fully, fully reserved, and the local Indian tribe has given their concurrence on this proposal. That might be why... It isn't a good idea. Um, another example of 07 architecture where it's very ominous and very large and very tall. So this is a prominent corner or a node in your city and uh, this particular application and idea for a site plan and development may not have respected that fully. Round two, uh, the idea for apartments on this property really wasn't well received. So this is an example of why um, it probably wasn't. If you look closely, it's very compact, very dense, uh, both in horizontal and vertical design. That's the vertical design. Um, it ran into opposition. Um, we're good listeners. It got scratched. <laughs> Can't say too much more about it, but uh, all right, it was an idea. It went through the process. And again, this is how the property matured um, and the process can work. 
back into the city uh, last year, 140 units, two and three story condominium for sale. So it was a very basically a, 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 a change where it went from four, four excuse me, we went from four rent to four sale. The problem with this particular site plan, in my personal opinion, when I started with the company last year, I don't think a three-story, I personally convinced my peers, excuse me, that a three-story element at this particular location would sell well. Um, we can talk about the aesthetics, they're tall, but as far as aesthetics and sellability and financeability for a particular program at this particular location, we didn't think it was a good idea. So we put our marketing hats back on, went back to our designers and our architects and all the people involved in the many layers of site planning, and then re-submitted to the city. These are the points that we really um, listen to. So comment comes out from, from city staff, from neighbors, from others that are involved and stakeholders in, this, in, in your city, and this is where we listen. No apartments, ownership would be preferred, i.e. for sale units, stay with the allowable density, they don't want a general plan amendment, no density bonus, be cognizant and polite and uh, smart with parking. Please provide a two-car garage, full-size garage, not a tandem with each unit, uh, exceed the common open space requirements, and improve the project frontage. That's where I think it's very important because, you know, unless you live there, uh, most citizens and travelers and visitors to your city will see this property from the edge. They'll drive by it, they'll walk by it, they'll ride their bike by it. That's the frame, that, that's, the, that's the panoramic that will be um, noticed and talked about. I think we've done a fantastic job with staff's influence in providing for that. Here's the current site plan. If I went through the series of them and I compared them all, you would see how much looser, how much more open this particular site plan allows for. The brown area to the south is that cultural resource area, fully preserved, it'll be fenced, it'll be uh, basically left alone and designed not to trespass. The rest of it and the edges you'll see um, are much more open. All those units are two-story. There's less of them. We're going from 140 to 124. There's some more open space. It's just a looser feel horizontally and a, and a better product vertically, which we think is more aesthetic, will, will be a better uh, unit for the buyers and provide just a better service and, and feel to this particular location at this situation. I call that the foo-foo plan, and that's, what, that's really what I'm getting at. Um, that's all, if you look closely, those are really plants and bushes and landscaping for the slopes. The, the slopes will be manufactured. That's really what you have to do in our business to make the grades and make uh, accommodations for utilities. But it's really, really well balanced with um, a great screen, a great theme, a great aesthetic edge. So there'll be road improvements, there'll be slope improvements, it'll be really be something kind of glamorous and nice to drive by and have a very beautiful open feel. If you look closely also at the units, how they're, they're perpendicular to the travel ways and not set up horizontally. Yes, would we have liked maybe a more horizontal design because of a view premium? Yes, but as far as aesthetics and I think an impact and a compliment to this site and this situation and the city and how you drive by and notice this, you're really gonna look at the edges of these units and not the face of these units. That's beautiful, I in, in our opinion, that that's a really good design. I can't give you an example of that where this has been built. Why? This has been designed for this particular site, this particular market, this particular city, and all the guidelines for this buyer, this citizen, this user at this particular location. So it's not something off the shelf. It's been designed really for this corner. It's another shot of the, of the detail and the coloration and the, and the textures and so forth of these units. And this is important, I think, because it shows an, an eclectic nature of the architecture. You, you know, a lot of times, you know, multifamily or, or uh, um, townhomes have an, uh, a stigma where, oh, they're going to look so much the same. Not in this case at all. Each one of those is a different building treatment with different trim, different colors, different roof tiles. So almost every other building would be its own unit with its own flavor and its own style and its own uh, aesthetically pleasing, if I could use that word, uh, elevation. 
That's an art, artist rendering. Um, yes, it's probably within five to seven years post planting. You know, that's that's what they really do. I don't think any any you know artificial renderer will you know do a picture of exactly how it would look on opening day or first day of sale. But it's really designed to you know screen, hide, create a nice aesthetic feature, a nice image or frame of this particular property at this location. There's another one. Uh, probably straight on, you know, these, these viewpoints were um, decided on by city staff and we basically said, okay, go out there and, you know, take a rendering and pr create something on how this would look in the future that the city could be proud of. It's my final slide. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Um, we wish you well and if you have any questions or any ideas, we're great listeners and we're here to uh, provide an answer or a suggestion if possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have four speakers, so I'll go on ahead and um, the speakers, and then we can go to questions. Um, so first speaker is uh, Dean Bernquist. Madam Mayor and City Council, uh, my name is Dean Bernquist, uh, Director of Guard. My <coughs> fellow director, Ursula Sach, prepared some remarks regarding Delpy's Corner. Due to an emergency, she could not be here tonight, and she asked me to read her remarks that she had prepared to the council as follows. Wahomey Alliance for Responsible Development, Guard, seeks to protect the semi-rural quality of life in the area bordering Vista to the north. There seems to be a troubling pattern here. The city of Vista is making land use decisions based on incomplete information, particularly in regard to traffic. Last month, Guard brought to your attention that the mitigated negative declaration traffic study for the Vista Grande Drive annexation was defective. The critical intersection of East Vista Way and Warmlands was only analyzed in regard to westbound traffic, when in fact the northbound and southbound traffic is a is at a critical state during rush hour and should have been part of the study. In spite of that, your vote was 3-2 to approve the project. Our thanks to the two of you who took our concerns seriously and agreed with us that infrastructure must be improved before further development is approved in this area. Once again, with this Delpy Corners project, you have an NMD that only analyzes traffic impacts in one direction, south and disregards any traffic to the north or west of the project. But this project is less than half a mile from where the East Vista Way gridlock begins, south of the Taylor Street bottleneck. This MND is incomplete and should be rejected. You must also consider the data provided by the Vista Fire Protection Board regarding emergency response times. We believe that VISTA is fortunate to have such an outstanding fire department with a great record of emergency response times averaging five minutes. However, response times during rush hour are as long as eight minutes, and the VISTA Fire Protection Board told Guard members that this is a concern for them. It is certainly a concern for those citizens who live in the area, and we hope it is a concern for you. The board explained that six minutes is the magic number for emergency response. In some medical emergencies, people who could have been saved if they had been reached within six minutes cannot be saved, obviously, if it takes longer. The board told us that so far no one has died. Are people going to have to start dying before you do something to resolve the East Vista Way gridlock? Are people going to have to start dying before you stop putting more cars on this road? City Council, before you add yet another minute to critical fire department response time, reject this project now with the county and work with the county on providing the necessary infrastructure needed on East Vista Way before approving further traffic jam projects such as Delpy's Corner. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bernquist. Our next speaker is Lupe, is it Via Grana? That close? <laughs> Good 
Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of Richmond Apartments. I manage a community of 96 uh, one- and two-bedroom apartments, and I'm here on behalf of all my families to oppose this um, development. I have been here for every development, and I have to uh, thank the developer. This presentation is beautiful, and the project looks like a beautiful project, but my main concern is the traffic. Uh, I didn't see in the presentation any specifics as to where are these cars going to be sent to. As it is right now, it's a nightmare. Even today, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, to drive from East Vista Way, where, is, where our community is right opposite to where the project, this project is to be, it took me almost half an hour just to get here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon with everybody leaving from schools. So if we add this extra 310 cars to the mix, what's going to happen? And yes, it sounds like a fantasy to me that they come and they tell you it's going to be only 124 townhomes. It's going to be three-bedroom townhomes that allows for seven people to live in each townhome. That's the occupancy limit. So that's going to be an extra 868 people that are going to be coming to live in that little specific corner. Do we have the uh, ability to provide for that density of people there? Not only the people, but my main, main concern is the traffic. And what I saw in that presentation, I it wasn't clear to me where these people are going to go to. Yes, they're going to be using East Vista Way. They're going to be using Bobier. They're going to be even using Foothill. But at one time or another, they're going to be on East Vista Way. And what's going to happen to all of us that are already using that road right now? And it's congested as it is right now. So I'm opposing this and asking you guys to take a harder look at the traffic more than anything. Everything that looks beautiful, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful development. But the reality is, where are we going with the traffic? That's my main concern, and that's why we're opposing that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Serge Saar. Am I not saying it right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, um, I'm not Serge. I'm Russell Bennett. I'm, oh. I'm his brother. You're the next speaker. So I'm speaking. Of, I have both of you are oh, both. Well, he doesn't. Well, he, he preferred that I would just speak for him. If so that's he okay. doesn't want to speak? Not necessarily. Okay. He wants to wave. Okay, that's, okay. Okay. that's fine. Uh, well, Mr. Saar lives uh, on the border of, actually he lives above the, uh, the, the proposed project. And uh, his concern with it is uh, uh, he's built himself a lovely privacy blind, a fence along that border uh, out of yucca plants that were planted years ago. And uh, his question is, I mean, should uh, all of his hard work have to go and you have an R&R, &R, a remove and replace, it's the replace component that he's concerned with. What is it that uh, he could look at? Uh, is there a, any kind of a rendering, any kind of a, uh, oh, I don't know, a standard for this type of replacement on a, a border, especially when he's above this project? He would prefer not to look right into it, but he'll be watching, but he'll prefer not to look right into it. Uh, and. Uh, is there an engineering rendering, a drawing, or something that he could take a look at uh, that would be a proposed, uh, you know, uh, replacement for what he's done? That's his concern. Okay. Would that be? W would there be something that uh, perhaps the developer could get in touch with Mr. Saar and uh, and discuss it with him uh, because he's really quite concerned about it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. 
Um, that's all of our speakers, and I, I think before we talk, we, um, I have to just close that I um, have met with the developers several times, actually, actually through all these pre all these different iterations, <laughs> and so um, they listened to us very well, and so I wanted to disclose that I, I have met with them on that. So I think the rest of you might have some disclosures also. Councilmember Aguilera. I have also met with the developer several times to uh, uh, encourage different changes. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Franklin. I've met with the developer and with citizens about this project. Okay, and Councilmember Green. I have also met with the developer about this project. Okay, so, um, I don't know, does, did, did um, the applicant, do you want to say anything after the speakers? Or just want us to go ahead and do you have anything else to add that you wanted to add? Sure. Um, what I heard, uh, I, I'm dangerous enough to talk about traffic impacts. I know levels of service, average daily trips, modeling. Um, I probably couldn't, wouldn't be the best to uh, respond to a traffic um, concern or question, okay. to be honest with you. Okay. Um, the, the last gentleman I got up, um, if he, I'll give him my business card. Uh, there's amazing ways now to view projects from the air. From they, it's all computer-based. Um, what I showed up at the screen were really fixed positions and perspectives with artistic rendering, but we have the ability now to take the, the grading plan and you can pick an XYZ coordinate and you'll get a picture of what it will look like, both horizontally and vertically. So any impact from any point really around the project, we have that ability. Okay, maybe you could meet with him and give him your card and that yeah, solve so that. Yeah, it's really not a lot of work at all. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, Councilmember Green, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just have a couple questions on the project. Um, I was taking notes while everybody was speaking. So traffic, I actually drive down Foothill Drive past Oak at that stop sign at Foothill Oak Elementary every morning. I have kids that I take to Vista High School about 7.30 every morning, and I know the gridlock that we face there at that intersection. Um, and if I heard you guys correctly, we have done a, a study, um, you know, a traffic study on there. It's my understanding per the paperwork that I reviewed, there's going to be two stoplights installed. I heard you say there was a light going to be at Foothill and Oak Drive, but that's not where the actual project access is, right? So do we have two lights going in on Foothill Drive there? Or? The project will only put in one light at their main project driveway. That's the applicant's responsibility that would go in with the development. Okay. The city also has a plan to signalize Oak and Foothill in the future. That's in our CIP. They would have to provide some funding toward that, and that's a future project that the city would have to fund the remainder of. Okay, so are we looking at that four ways? Because it's, you know, the stop right there at Oak Drive and Foothill Drive. Are we looking at having that in there before the like property starts selling or before like all the traffic comes in or are we gonna so our traffic engineering work? department reviews those signal priorities okay. um, on an annual basis when we review the cip which we will do in may and we can talk about that if that's the council's priority at uh, a signal project there sooner rather than later okay so for this project though you guys have looked at the traffic and said hey it's probably going to be best that we do that light there and then this additional light in there this project will add additional traffic to the road network. There are some improvements that occur at the intersection of Foothill and East Vista Way as a result of the frontage improvements that improve the traffic operations there. Yeah. Um, the Foothill-Oak intersection is in need of a signal, but yeah. like I said, it's really a priority of the council since it's okay. not fully funded by the development. The development doesn't trigger a significant impact at that intersection that requires okay. them to put in a signal. They just have to contribute toward it. Okay, so we'll know how much you give in. And then the, um, the other question I had there is I turn right onto Foothill Drive off of Vista Way, and I think that's probably a lot of concern of the people who live in that apartment there is the more, you know, when you turn right off of uh, Vista Way going onto Foothill, it's a real short right-hand turn lane, and you have people jumping up on the curb to hit that right turn lane. I'm assuming with the frontage improvements, we're extending that right-hand turn lane a good, what, like 100 yards or so? How much further is that going to go out? Uh, there will be an additional full travel lane on that oh, section of East Vista Way, which will transition into a right turn lane. So you'll see full improvements along that section that will handle all the traffic that needs to go onto Foothill. Okay, and then the last question I have, and then we'll let Mr. Aguilera ask his questions, is um, there was a, something brought up from Guard about safety. I'm assuming that we always have our, I mean, I ask my fire chief pretty much every time we have a development, they look into this and make sure we're not jeopardizing the safety of our citizens by putting them in this project or jeopardizing the safety of other citizens by approving this project. Like, we have the resources to handle that. Go ahead. Uh, we do, Councilman. We have a fire station on East Vista Way, as you know, by Wildwood, as well as one by Taylor that can respond to this project. 
Councilor Thank Aguilera. You. Yeah, I did want to take a second to thank the uh, developer for listening to all of our concerns and the citizens' concerns. Um, you know, I've, I've seen that property all my life, and it's always been a, a, an empty lot. I never really thought too much about it, um, but I did think about the neighbors there, people, because I once did live on Foothill, um, and I was surprised that most of the neighbors are very supportive of the project. Uh, apparently, things that I didn't know were happening on this property were, um, you know, graffiti. Obviously, the rocks get graf a lot of graffiti, and, uh, you know, we, we found out that those are sacred rocks. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, there's a lot of homeless camps in that, and there was often fires, and my kids the other day actually commented that uh, maybe there won't be any fires now on the on the hillside there. So, um, but I, mostly I, I did want to thank you for making the project smaller, making it an ownership project. Um, I think that's important. Um, I think that's the community of Vista, uh, one of their bigger concerns. I think, you know, most people know that it's going to get developed at some point. So I think this makes it uh, easier to swallow, you know, and uh, I thank you for listening to our critique on architecture and colors and all that good stuff and the landscaping especially. Um, you know, the two-car garages, you know, all, you know, each place having a uh, covered garage. So, you know, just a lot of things. I know those are, um, you know, just make the project a little bit more expensive to build. And of course, that translates to more expensive housing too, unfortunately. But I think it's going to be a nicer project. And I think we can all agree whether we disagree on other parts of this, you know, as far as traffic and that, I think this is going to be a beautiful project. Um, my one thing that, that I would ask, and will continue to ask here, um, I've asked from the start, your people were not very uh, positive to my request. You know, we have a, a, a school, an elementary school, right across the street. And I would like to see the sidewalk extended up to the stop sign or because I don't think we're going to have a crosswalk in the middle of this street on Foothill. Um, but we're talking about elementary children, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. We have a lot of uh, students that walk in this area. And I understand it adds expense. Um, we're not talking about a huge expanse, you know, that we're trying to cover here. I would even be happy with just blacktop if you were willing to do that to make it safe for students and for the people that you're going to be selling these homes to who are in, invariably going to have children that are going to be walking to this school to make it safe for them to get to their school. So I'd like to hear from the developer and see if this is something he would be willing to uh, consider. I knew that was coming toward me. Um, can we discuss first the, the, uh, what we're providing as far as the signal and the walkway? We actually have two walkways. Um, one was suggested, you know, one's ADA, and, and we can show that location by the entrance. By the way, it really does have one primary entrance. The other entrance is an emergency vehicle entrance. So let's talk about the main entrance. There's an ADA path that traverses down the slope at the proper gradient. Then there was a sidewalk that was added um, by the Planning Commission for really, I think the gentleman um, spoke about young kids and, and parents walking their children toward the elementary school. Um, we think it was a good idea. Uh, a little bit extra extra cost, a little bit extra impact, but hard to argue when it comes to safety, especially safety of children. Also in the process, and maybe this is where staff can help me out, we were um, required to put in a signal at our location. I'm not exactly sure on what I'm asking. Is there a crosswalk at that particular point, and that, is that where the children or parents of would traverse across the street to the elementary school? So if you'll note in the middle slide here at Foothill Drive in the project driveway, 
there's a path that comes down to the corner there where the signal would be, and there's a crosswalk that goes across Foothill to the sidewalk on the other side in lieu of asking the applicant to build a sidewalk down to the stop controlled intersection at Foothill. We thought it would be more efficient to get students across the street at the signalized intersection there and put them on a sidewalk along the school frontage. Okay. So, so Councilman Regular, I, I think the situation is better than what was proposed or even thought of before you had the idea. Yeah. That, that's my understanding. No, okay. <clears throat> I wasn't aware of that sidewalk there or that crosswalk. And the signal. And a signal. <laughs> so, so, not for you, but uh, we're going to give priority to people on Foothill, though, on this light, right? Absolutely, traffic. yeah, as far as traffic flow, yeah. This is a project driveway, so it would be handled as other, you know, project driveways are major arterials. The arterial gets the primary movement. Because the project on Sky, I mean, this is for later talk, but the project Sky Apartments, for whatever reason, they have the best priority ever coming out of that place. They stop everybody. I'll talk to our traffic engineer about that. So, so this crosswalk you. you're talking about is right. At, you're talking about is right at the dri the driveway in. It's, that's where the new crosswalk will be at that light. Correct. It's shown here in the in the design in the middle. There's a crosswalk that'll cross from the westbound side of the intersection over to the other side of Foothill Drive. Okay. Okay, um, Councilmember Green, you had another question. Yeah, my, my question actually was about the safety. We talked about it in our meeting as well. Um, and I know the Planning Commission was asking for an additional pedestrian walkway um, because what they were saying is with the kids who are going to be going down Foothill Elementary is there is only that one, um, you know, entrance and exit, and kids are probably going to take the path of least resistance, which is this downhill bomb right into Foothill Drive. Um, I do like that there's a stop, uh, a, you know, a signal there and a crosswalk. Um, I'd like to request as opposed to, like, you know, walkway right there maybe just some type of signage no pedestrian access you know only cars and then also we talked about is there a way for the kids to get to the street quicker and I don't know if you looked into the cost of that or not uh, O'Malley but I'll ask you about it as far as maybe where that instead of them having to walk down the whole switchbacks because kids might just you know kids will jump and jump down hills like maybe just putting like a direct stair access to where they can just go straight ahead or something that maybe not be too cost effective or oh, I think I think we saw the the uh Concern with um, with the stoplight. With, with, no, no, no. With, with the uh, an access right down the main drive or the, mm -hmm. the driveway of the community the, mm -hmm. at the entrance. We're going to add a sidewalk to that. You are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, we haven't designed it yet, but okay. we, we we accepted the condition. Okay, so we don't need. You're getting the best of both worlds in a way. So it, it, <laughs> can't fives. get any better. Good job. Thank you. I have I have one more speaker that came. Brett Schatzenbach. Brett Schonsenbach, Vista Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for letting me speak kind of out of order here. I apologize for not being here earlier. It's the time of year. I got two different teams coaching basketball. And we had maybe here between practices trying to squeeze this in. So thank you for giving me the chance to uh, share. The board of directors at the chamber is in favor of this project. Um, and I heard some of your dialogue, and, and I know a lot of you are aware of this, but you know the developer has taken a lot of input from the public and the community and made a lot of changes to this development. Um, we're very excited to see a, an ownership you know, townhome project instead of more apartments, and a very high quality um, project as well. Also very excited about how this can help activate that end of town. Um, the development that is kitty corner from this is is uh, scheduled to go through a whole bunch of renovations and uh, the schematics that we saw showed only two tenants that are holding over from who currently lease there who will be holding over through all the development and so having a quality residential project this close will really help drive more um, businesses to want to lease in that in that uh, complex there, which would be great because we certainly don't need a bunch more empty strip malls and Vista and, and empty shopping centers and whatnot. So I think these will be great potential customers for our, our retail, our restaurants, and, and our uh, industrial and commercial out there as well. So um, we'd like to encourage you guys to approve this project tonight. And again, thank you for letting me speak out of normal order. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I thank Mr. O'Malley too. Thank you for working with us for a long time and making changes and listening to us and listening to the residents. That, that's very much appreciated. I think you came up with a really great project and we're looking forward to 
to that. So, um, Councilmember Aguilera. Yeah, I recommend uh, we close the public hearing and accept staff's recommendation. Uh, approving the MND and uh, adopting uh, city council ordinance, whatever number it will end up being, <laughs> and approving the specific plan and the site development plan. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. That project passes um, four to nothing with um, Councilmember Rigby excused. So, yeah. So now we're going to do our presentation. So um, I'm going to go back to that. So um, we have a proclamation here for um, Dr. Bronner's Magic Soap Stay in the City of Vista. So I'm going to ask the COO Michael Mill is it Milliam and CFO Trudy Bronner to please join me at the podium, and if you all will join me also. We got a check. So this is very exciting. I have this. Let me get this here. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to read the proclamation here. We're so excited! Seventy-five thousand dollars from Dr. Bronner's, um, the City of Vista, and Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps have launched a new partnership in support of the Moonlight Stage Presents 2017 series. Whereas Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps seventy-five thousand dollar title sponsorship would help to support the cultural arts program for the City of Vista, and its Moonlight Presents programming throughout the year. This generous investment allows the Moonlight Presents series to provide fabulous live entertainment throughout the year to residents and visitors. The partnership between the City of Vista and Dr. Bronner's will enhance the quality of life in Vista by increasing access to high quality live performances. And Dr. Bronner's partnership demonstrates both their appreciation for the arts and their dedication to supporting local programs such as the Moonlight Amphitheater. Therefore, the mayor and members of our Vista City Council do hereby express their appreciation to Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps for their generous support of the Moonlight Stage Presents 2017 series and proclaim Wednesday, February 15, 2017 as Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps Day in the City of Vista. So congratulations and thank you so much. If what the mayor just said was a thesis, this would just be an abstract of that. On behalf of the company's owners and its 160 employees, Dr. Bronner's is happy to have made Vista our corporate home. And the Moonlight Amphitheater is one of the institutions that makes Vista a destination, and we look forward to our partnership in supporting this year's Moonlight Presents series. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was a nice break. <laughs> okay, back to our agenda. And so now um, the next thing is a discussion item. 
Items scheduled for discussion generally require de a detailed explanation by staff or the agency member that has requested the item. Tonight we have one discussion item, and that is CIP 8282 Bub Williamson Park Improvement Project, the Mitigated Negative Declaration. Assistant to the City Manager, Tony Winnie, is going to provide the staff report and our Assistant City Manager. <laughs> Which one? Thank you, thank you Mayor. <laughs> Tony will be presenting. Okay. <laughs> All right, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, we have before you this evening uh, for consideration the mit mitigated negative declaration for CIP 8282, which is Bob Williamson Park Improvements. Bob Williamson Park is located at 530 Grapevine. As you can see from this area map, the park's located adjacent to Grapevine Elementary. And with Emerald Drive to the west and Grapevine Road to the east, just north of the 78. The park was originally constructed in the late 80s, and it currently has two softball fields, a passive use area, spectator seating, restrooms, a snack bar, and a small gazebo on site. Bob Williamson was chosen for the location of this CIP project due to a number of uh, reasons, um, one of which is the age of the park. You can also see that um, for another, other, other reasons that are listed on the slide, uh, Western Vista is currently deficient in park space, with the closest parks being uh, Breeze Hill Park in South Vista, and then the Vista Sports Park in Northern Vista. So the CIP project includes a number of improvements to the existing park one of which is a lighted arena soccer, uh, soccer field, a remodeled restroom building, a dog park, children's playgrounds, ADA improvements to the entire site, and additional amenities such as the gazebo, drinking fountains, um, benches, and other uh, amenities. Here you see a conceptual plan of the improvements that are proposed. Um, you'll note um, there's a dog park on the far left-hand side of the screen, which would be divided into two different areas, one for small dogs, one for large dogs. In the center, you have the passive use area, um, which would be uh, the only turf located on the uh, new site. Then you have the children's playground uh, directly next to that. And there will be two children's playground, one for younger kids and one for older kids, um, and a swing set. The restrooms are uh, uh, up on the top of the slide and then the arena soccer field um, to the right. Um, you have two entrances into uh, the location right now. One is on Grapevine, which is on the top of the slide, and the secondary access is on Huff Street. Um, I'll make note that uh, staff originally proposed opening Huff Street as a part of this project. Um, there is currently a gate at Huff Street that has been locked since the 80s, um, and so we ha are removing the proposal uh, to open that access. So it, that gate would re remain closed and the primary access will remain on Grapevine Lane. So here is a breakdown of the uh, project components. So if you're not familiar with um, arena soccer fields, um, here's a picture of one that's located over in the city of San Marcos, which is called Sunset Park. Um, it's similar to the one that's being proposed at Bob Williamson. Arena soccer fields have become very popular in recent years throughout San Diego County. And due to that fact, um, the, it, well, part of the reason is because of synthetic turfs allows for year-round play and play in the off-season. Vista is the only city in North County, San Diego, uh, that currently does not host an arena soccer field. The field would be uh, 200 feet by 80 feet, which is smaller than a full-sized soccer field. Uh, but surrounded by backer board to keep the uh, ball into play on the field. There would be spectator seating to replace our existing wooden seats that are there. And the soccer field would be lit for evening play, which would extend the current hours of the park from dusk um, till 10 p.m. This would enhance the usability of the field. Uh, no outdoor amplification is being proposed as part of the project. Here's a picture of a similar uh, outdoor soccer field, which is uh, lighted at night um, to give you a perspective of what Bob Williamson might look like. This project uh, has four lights. Um, I'm sorry, uh, has six. Ours would only have four. As you can see, the LED lighting technology constrains the light and ensures that it only lights the field of play. 
The proposed uh, lights for the project are all night sky rated LEDs. Um, so that would shield uh, the lights and prevent light pollution into surrounding areas and limit the footprint of the lights. Many of the lights would be automatically dimmed when not in use um, by motion sensors and the lights would be down directed downward to minimize the glare and would not produce light pollution in the residential areas adjacent. Field lights will be switched off when not in use by sports programming and a photometric study will be completed and submitted to the planning department prior to issuance of grading permits. The secondary slide shows uh, the actual uh, part of the photometric plan that uh, we've already produced showing uh, the footprint of the lights at Bob Williamson that would be proposed for the soccer field. Another project component is the dog park, as I previously mentioned, with the two separate areas um, on the northern end of the property. This would be the city's first dog park. Uh, besides the off-leash area that's uh, currently in Buena Vista Park. Um, and here we have a picture of the entrance to uh, the dog park that was recently completed over in the city of Carlsbad um, at Alga Norte Community Park. The children's play area uh, would have two structures and a swing set. Um, there will be uh, one for zero to five-year-olds and another for uh, five to 12-year-olds and the existing concrete amphitheater seating uh, would be retained, remodeled, and re uh, to, to include a seating area for parents to watch their children while they're at play. Um, the concrete seating basically wraps around uh, the children's play area, as you can see on the image to the left. In addition to the improvements I've already mentioned, the restrooms will receive significant upgrades to improve ADA access. Sidewalks uh, and access points throughout the park uh, will be improved to improve uh, access, access uh, for all residents, including those with disabilities. And all new drought uh, tolerant landscaping will be installed along with a new gazebo, drinking fountains, benches, and almost a half acre of passive use turf area. All construction will take place within the park's existing footprint and will not disturb the adjacent wooded area. So here you see a project timeline. Uh, City Council uh, approved the, uh, the Bub Williamson Park improvements previously as part of the fiscal year 15-16 uh, and 16-17 uh, capital improvement program budgets. And in November uh, of 2015, the City Council approved a 281,000 uh, design build contract with TB Pennock. Uh, and that design is now uh, complete. In addition to prior City Council review, the Parks and Recreation Commission reviewed the project on four separate occasions, with final approval of the project taking place on September 26, 2016. The city conducted a public workshop on April 25, 2016 at the Park Re uh, Parks and Recreation Commission meeting to solicit input from the public on the proposed improvements. Area residents were notified of the public workshop by mail and invited to attend. They were also notified by mail to provide comments uh, on the environmental report, which is before you this evening. Staff also posted information on the project throughout uh, 2016 via the city's website, social media, and public events, some of which you see listed here. Staff also met with representatives from Vista Softball, Vista American Little League, uh, Vista Soccer, and Tiffany's Soccer Leagues to discuss the improvement plans and elimination of the two existing softball fields. Those fields are currently being uh, utilized for softball practice. However, um, elimination of the fields uh, would not impact their current operations, and Vista Softball and Vista American Little League both stated um, that they could utilize other fields if necessary for practice. In addition to those residents that participated in the public workshop, an additional eight people contacted the city in support of the project, and another two with concerns about aspects of the proposal. So you have before you tonight consideration of the mitigated uh, negative declaration, uh, which is the environmental study that was conducted in January uh, as part of the project. The environmental study was conducted by an outside consultant, Harris and Associates, uh, in partnership with the city and looked at possible impacts to aesthetics, biological and cultural resources, geology, water quality impacts on surrounding land use, and more. A copy of the full MND report is included in your agenda package as Exhibit 1A. A mitigated negative uh, declaration was issued as a result of the initial study that was conducted, and the public was invited to review and comment on that report. 
Area residents were notified via mail and invited to comment on the report. Uh, staff received 12 letters, uh, and generally the concerns included traffic, impacts, crime, lighting, and noise. Response to each of those letters are included also in Exhibit 1A of your agenda packet. The initial study uh, concluded that the proposed park improvements will not produce any impacts on the environment that cannot be mitigated. Mitigation will be required during construction to ensure adherence to noise and lighting ordinances and to protect any Native American uh, biological or paleontological resources that may be found. Uh, as you can see from this slide, the project timeline moving forward if the MND is approved this evening, the construction contract with TB Pennock would be brought back to the City Council for consideration uh, this summer, with the project completion currently estimated to be early 2018. City staff has also applied for a $1 million a youth soccer program grant from the California Parks and Recreation Department to help fund this project. Approval of the uh, mitigated negative declaration tonight is required to secure the youth soccer program grant. Staff recommends adoption of the resolution approving the uh, MND to construct a dog park, outdoor soccer arena, children's playgrounds, and associated improvements at Bob Williamson Park. That completes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that the City Council may have. I also have Diane Sandman, who is the Director of Environmental Services with Harrison Associates available to field any questions that you may have. I um, have four speakers, so should we hear from the speakers first? Okay, the first was Brad McGee. Mike, put the microphone right, yeah, around toward you, thank you. I, I turned it around when I was down there. Hello, I'm uh, Brad McGee. I live on uh, Grapevine Lane, which is the access street to the park, and uh, basically Williamson Park is uh, an end of street park, especially since the other areas closed, and, and uh, I'm here to speak uh, really against, I'm for improvements to the park, but uh, I'm against putting a uh, soccer arena in that small of a, a park. I, I just don't think it's right. I think that the size of that, that uh, soccer arena is too big for this small of a park. When I've researched it, the other parks, including the one that um, the assistant city manager showed in San Marcos, is a much bigger park that was put in. Uh, some, some of these uh, parks in Orange County and LA that have them are, the soccer arena just takes up a small area of a big park, whereas this one's just gonna dominate it. And uh, the report, even though a lot of it's, uh, most of it's, Correct, some of it's misleading. It says we're gonna clear two softball fields and put in one soccer field. But it could very well say that we're gonna take out two small children's park, because one was a t-ball field for five to eight years old. Another was for uh, girls bobby socks, a smaller field. We're gonna strip those out and put in a, a adult size soccer arena that's the length of, a, of an NHL hockey rink into this small park. And, uh, uh, and then we're also gonna leave it open till 10 instead of close it, close the park at, at dusk, which is gonna uh, impact that, that area as far as the, the people that live, live nearby there. So uh, uh, number one, I'm against that. Number two, I think that a better choice, I'm not against soccer arena. I think it ought to be, there ought to be a facility for that but in another, in a bigger park, or else do what you did with the skateboard parks and find a piece of property and put it on and preserve what you have with uh, Williamson Park having, a, having an open green space that can be used by many residents, not just, just uh, indoor soccer players. Uh, the dog park I'm okay with, the children's playground, I think that's plenty enough of changes to get more people to use this park. Uh, one section in the report is aesthetics. Sure, there's no ocean view or mountain view, but when you go to that parking lot that's shown there, you see an open green space and the wooded area behind. It's very pleasing to look at, it's relaxing, and that's more of a passive type park that people can go and, 
and have a conversation and relax, that's going to be taken away. Now you'll park and you're just going to see this big walled structure there. It'll change the whole atmosphere of that, that little park. And I don't think it's changing it for the better. And, and I don't think the uh, city took into much account of the local residents. Most people I've talked to in the area that used to park, and I go down there mostly every day, none of us think it's a good idea. And one last thing is, if you read the report and those 12 replies, 11 are against it, and, the, and you'll see a lot of the concerns with traffic, noise, and light. So I hope you consider the local residents' opinions too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Deborah McGee. Honorable Mayor, members of council, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight on Bob Williamson Park. I want to discuss the uh, traffic issues that are going to impact our little neighborhood. Um, there's going to be an increase in the traffic, which in these um, document, the mitigated negative declaration, specifically states um, which would not generate additional vehicular traffic. I th think that's untrue. The park now is open from early in the morning until dusk. Um, this, it's proposed to stay open until 10 p.m. There's going to be soccer, dog park people, and children. There's going to be a lot more extra traffic. There's not enough parking. We were told parking will be, overflow parking will be on Grapevine Lane, which is where we live. We have friends who visit. We have activities. We park in front of our houses. And now we're going to have to give up our excess parking to space that's not available for the, the, the park. Um, also, there are no sidewalks that go all the way down to the park, so with the excess traffic, with parking on the street, um, you're going to have families, children, people on bicycles, people walking their dogs to the park. The sidewalk ends, they're going to have to use the street to get to the park, and all the traffic back and forth and people parking, I think it's going to be a big safety issue. Um, what else did I want to? Oh, um, I've been in this house on Grapevine Lane since 1989, so I've grown up with Williamson Park. I've seen changes, good and bad. Um, when I first moved in, that um, the park wasn't locked at dusk, so I approached City Council and uh, Gloria McClellan and was given the key. I was the gatekeeper. They installed the gate, and I was the person that went down every morning and unlocked it and went down in the evening and locked it. I did it for months until the, the parks department took over. So I know this park, and I know what the impact is going to be in our little neighborhood with this soccer arena. I, I think the dog park is great, and the, the area for children is great, but the soccer arena... I disagree with it, and I hope that you'll find a better place to put that. Thank you. Uh, Aaron Adams? You don't want to talk? Okay. Um, then Cliff Kaiser. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, I always encourage and welcome park improvements. Uh, it's something that Vista needs. It needs more parks, bigger parks, better parks. So I, I encourage uh, you to move uh, forward with park improvement, especially if you can use other people's money with the, the grant uh, request that's pending. Um, I do want to point out a couple of things, though. Um, there are only two lighted girls or youth softball fields readily available to that league in the entire city of Vista. And those are in South Vista at uh, Rancho, or next to Rancho Buena Vista High School. Um, 
the other lighted fields that are softball fields at Brinkle Terrace or Breeze Hill are typically used by adults and uh, not very often available to the youth softball. Um, so there is a need, particularly in the north side of Vista for a lighted youth softball field or a lighted softball field available, uh, easily accessible and available to the uh, uh, Vista girls. Um, and if you were to compare the number of lighted soccer fields or the number of lighted baseball fields per the number of players, uh, you would find that the girls softball is underwhelmed. They just don't have the resources readily available like those other sports. So that's something to consider as you think about parks and expansion in the future. And it's also a poor comparison when you look at youth softball facilities, lighted youth softball facilities available uh, in Carlsbad, Oceanside, and particularly uh, San Marcos and Escondido, which has uh, got a beautiful set of parks and lighted parks. Slightly tangential issue here is um, partnership with the Unified School District um, can help. They have a few softball fields. They're not lighted, uh, so they're not very useful because right now we're in the midst of uh, girls' softball, and until the time changes, they, they have to leave when, when dusk happens. Um, but there's also been some discussions at the school district uh, board meetings uh, by Gary Garricks and myself and others saying, hey, let's continue this discussion to share those facilities. And the school district just recently m made efforts to open up some basketball courts, which is good. And um, there's also, I know that the city's in, in, in discussions with the uh, SDG&E regarding the, uh, the field or park of sorts at uh, North Melrose and Olive. I encourage you to continue those discussions to get that park available to uh, the public. Thank you. Thank you. That's our last speaker. So um, open to the council. <clears throat> Any comments, questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? <laughs> Councilmember Aguilera. My understanding, uh, the way it was explained to me, it was that Vista Girls Softball was in support of this or okay with this. I don't know if they support it, but necessarily, I mean, they, they weren't against it. That's correct. We met with the presidents of, of both of those leagues that you utilize uh, Bill, Bill Williamson for practice, and they were not in opposition to the removal. That would of the be fields. Vista Softball, Vista Girls Softball, and Vista American Little League. That's correct. I coached at Vista American, and yeah, that was the one of the the least desirable fields. So it's just it's out of the way. So um, I do have a question about the traffic. Um, I think there's a good point made this evening. Um, you know, the operational impacts, it says here, since the project would be replacing existing recreational facilities, with new recreational facilities, the project would not result in substantial changes to vehicle trips. Um, I'm not so sure that's true, though. Um, I mean, if we are opening it to later hours, um, and I guess it's an underused park right now, so I guess my question is, I mean, obviously we're doing this so that we get greater use, and I understand that's going to be the end result, so I'm not uh, disputing that, or I don't have major concerns with that, but what are we exactly looking at here? Are we when we approve this, or if we approve this, I should say, um, is the less than significant impact something that is based on, based on what? So we take a look at um, available parking spaces that are uh, there on site. So um, we currently have 58 parking spaces available. And then what we do is take an average of all of the users that would be utilizing the park at various times of day. And so we believe that the uh, park has a, enough existing parking spots to accommodate the users. Um, they're at, possibly at peak times. Um, there may be some overflow parking on uh, the adjacent streets. Um, however, those are only during peak times. So we, we're not actually adding um extra parking spaces to accommodate more people, right? Correct. Okay. 
And I would point out that arena soccer, the teams that are playing are smaller. So you have maybe six people on the field, a team of 10 or 12. You're not, it's not the same as a full 11 v 11 with the, the trips and the cars that are coming. To when you, so you can't compare it like to like to what you would see at a, at a large uh, full-size soccer field as well. Um, yeah. Attorney would like to yeah, ask, ask a question. Give, give, just give me a sec. Um, so something that, that you just said that kind of triggered something in my mind too, and that um, typically when I was coaching baseball or my daughter was involved in um, softball for a short period of time, typically parents would drive up, drop their kids off, take off, come back at the end, drive up, and take off again. So um, I didn't consider that, but I think that is uh, something to, to consider as well. I think our attorney has something to say. Um, Councilman Aguilera, I thought I would clarify uh, one thing related to uh, the process here tonight. This is a mitigated negative declaration, so it's an environmental document. And under CEQA, the correct test for whether or not you're increasing something is not the fact that the park may be underutilized today. It's a question of what the park could be used for today. Uh, there was a recent case on this involving the city of Carlsbad and an empty department store, and it was argued that there wasn't much traffic because the department store was empty, and that's not the test. It's what the traffic would be if the park were used to its full extent now with its uh, existing baseball diamonds. Okay. Well, and that's what I was trying to get answered is compared to what. And so if we're going by what it could be, then, then I think I'm fairly comfortable with that. Again, recognizing that uh, softball and baseball, like I said, there's 12 players to a team come and go. If you had games there, it would be even different. And most of these, uh, most of the time this field was actually used for practice. Um, so, okay, thank you. Councilmember Green. The only question I had was about the safety issues and the actual no sidewalks going into the park from the community. Is there safety concern? I mean, I, I don't really know. Is there safety concerns there? Is there sidewalks being added or anything like that if we're going to be increasing the traffic? And is that necessary? I mean, based off of, you know, your comparisons, you know, in the mitigated report and whatnot. So. Yeah, we're not proposing any sidewalk improvements as part of the project. Um, however, if, if council uh, wishes us to take a look at a future CIP project in that regard, we can certainly do that. And that would be just a separate project in itself. Correct. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Franklin. I still have some concerns. Um, this uh, green line, is that the entirety of the park? If you're referring to page 186, it's correct. The area Okay. The area above the um, white dotted line is the area that will be improved at the park. It's a good thing the president of the PTA is here. He set me straight. <laughs> um, hey, I've got a strange question. <clears throat> Did we look at the area that's proposed for the dog park as a potential location for the arena and soccer field, which would be over here? And it, it, it looks without having, you know, the ability to do the analysis on it here. It looks like it's roughly large enough, especially given this drawing. It looks like there's enough space to put that arena over here. And I'm just looking at it. It would be, that would back it up instead of being surrounded by all these homes. That would back that up against the school and, uh, and utilize this big buffer it seems like there would be less impact to, to homeowners, potentially, from that arrangement. Was that considered? Is that impossible? Um, it was considered. We looked at a number of different locations for the different uh, programming elements. Um, what you can't necessarily see um, on this map is uh, the changes in, in grade on the site. And so there is uh, quite a bit of, of change in the gradient in the middle of the site. And so in order to 
move it and locate it elsewhere, you'd have to do a, a lot of additional grading, and there would be a lot of additional project costs associated with that. Right. That'd be hundreds of thousands or more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the other question that I had was, <clears throat> I know that we've met with and, and received positive input, but did we have residents that came forward that's, that said that they want this specifically I mean, I know that it's our feeling that there's going to be great interest in it, but I'm just wanting to make sure that this is something that is the genesis of it is from the citizens and not just from us. And I want to make sure that, the, you know, it's going to be utilized not just by leagues that are organized, you know, uh, consisting of some VISTA residents and some other residents. I mean, it, what's the organic interest of our people, of our own citizens uh, in this? So when we had our public workshop, um, a number of the residents that were in support of the project, um, they expressed the most enthusiasm for the dog park. Um, we have, uh, like I mentioned, uh, met with the soccer league reps, um, and they are also very excited. Um, they have uh, let us know that they have full intention to, to program um, the arena soccer field um, for, for their various uses. Um, and we've also received a lot of positive feedback on the children's playgrounds um, because there's there's no existing currently. Did we get a count from them on how many of the uh, participants in their leagues reside in our city? No, we have not. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm also concerned about the additional time that the park is open, and I wondered if we if we include the arena soccer field element, if the entire park needs to be open. Uh, or if a part of it could be considered, even if we don't have a separate gate to control access to it, would it give the, de the sheriff's deputies the ability to, uh, you know, would it give them some additional options if the park was in fact closed, that area that's not uh, lit? In other words, the illuminated part of it was open till 10, the non-illuminated part closes at dusk, and if I'm a sheriff's deputy and there's kids hanging out or there's a bad element, gangs, whatever, they're hanging out in the, in the non-illuminated part of it, would they then have the right to say, hey, this area is closed and you're trespassing and would that give them another option and we thought about that? Well, currently all three um, of the major program uh, elements are going to be lighted until and, and available until 10 p.m. Oh, there are going to be lights for the dog park? Correct. As well. Oh, okay. Yeah. I missed that part. You know, it just seems to me, so our action tonight is just to consider the NMD. We're not, and I know we kind of already, we already approved some money to build the actual uh, stadium itself, but is this going to come before us again or is this it? It does come back to you again. You, uh, the city council approved uh, the design portion of the design build contract. It will come back before you to amend it for the construction portion in a, in a few months. So you will have time at that point to consider it as well. I'm not 100% sold on the idea that the soccer field is something that the citizens are, are I, I just wonder what the interest, I'm not, I'm not saying no to it yet, but I, I'm, I have a sincere curiosity what the level of interest from Vistans is in that particular part of it, because what I'm hearing is folks came to the workshops and they complimented the dog park some of the other uses, and I understand the idea about activating. I'm also thinking this is a smaller neighborhood park, and I, I think it seemed like it was a reasonable point that was made. You know, little smaller parks are nice for the, for the neighborhood, and, and big parks create a great place for these kind of gatherings. My concern is I, I, th I think there might be some legitimate concern about noise and other activity, especially going till 10 o'clock. I mean, if my... If, you, if you're playing soccer and there's folks yelling and there's lights and all that, I mean, that, that would definitely affect uh, the enjoyment of your home. Um, I, I'm, I want to understand a little bit better the impact on the homeowners there. I, it just of, seems to me like we got some, some really great things that we're doing here to the rest of the park, and it just seems like there's still, I mean, I, I know... I know we've we've given some thought to this, and I know we kind of seems like we've been sold on the soccer thing, but it just seems like that's the part of it that we've got a few people that are opposed to it. A number of people have written opposed to it. Are there letters in here from Vista residents that are 
did we even did we get any comments in writing? Uh, we we had one that was in favor of the soccer. Uh, most of the comments I received were actual phone calls. That were in favor. Correct. Yeah. How many people reached out to you in favor? Um, well, there were eight total um, that were outside of the public meeting. Yeah. And and those folks are all residents of Vista. Yes. Okay. So we had about eight people express positive interest in the soccer. And we did meet. Uh, did, were they specifically on the soccer portion? Were there comments? No, it was a, a mix of the different program components. Um, and we did meet as late as last week with members of the soccer leagues. Um, and they have, you know, walked through this process with us and assured us that um, their members are excited about the programming that will be available. So, um, you know, we spoke to them and invited them to the meeting this evening. Um, so I'm sure that they'd be more than happy to to reach out and, and weigh in on it. I'm, I'm, my remarks are concluded. There. Okay, because we're agreeing. I just wanted to speak to the level of interest in the community. Um, I was just recently elected. I had not walked over 10,000 residents in the city of Vista, and a lot of the residents that I spoke with, you know, hundreds if not thousands, voiced concerns for the dog park and the lack of a dog park. So I know the dog park is real big. I was also contacted by Hector Prado, who is one of the big coaches uh, with Vista Storm, and also Frank Mentado, who is a former player. Um, they're both Vista residents, and they spoke with me just about the ability to to kind of have an actual legit arena field, arena soccer field in the area. There is definitely a need for it. Um, it is definitely going to reactivate that park. Um, I have similar concerns to what, um, you know, Councilman uh, Aguilera said and also what Councilman Franklin said. I'm definitely into the CIP improvements for this particular project. Um, when we come back, I think, is when we you know, want to make sure we have those, you know, the people in favor of so we can kind of say, hey, these are our residents who are really here fired up about it. We know that there's opposition. A lot of times people come to oppose and they don't come to support. And maybe when we actually vote to spend the money, we can just reach out again. And those soccer players that you spoke with in the community, they can kind of let us know how it works, because I've never been a part of an arena soccer league before. And they can let us know what the traffic, you know, looks like and and all that good stuff. So I just want to let you know, like, from a level of interest in the community, soccer fields, dog parks, that was the huge thing. We do have a good amount of softball fields in the area. I have a daughter who plays softball. I played adult softball for about 20 years in Vista. Um, so there is definitely a need from that aspect and from our community members. So I just wanted to speak to that. Lots of Vista residents are for this that I've spoken with, and I am pretty engaged out there. So I just want to throw that out there. I would also say that I know that the soccer field over in the town site, they wore the grass off it, and then they then we put artificial turf on there, and then they wore their artificial turf off. And then there's also an arena, a small arena field over there in the town site that they play. You know, so I, I think that it's, I always hear that, there, that there's a big need for the a soccer and arena soccer here in our city, an official field. So I hear that from the, the people out there, the kids and the parents. So comes more Aguilera. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and I, I just want to reiterate, I, I know there's a great need for soccer. Um, I, I this weekend went to a soccer tournament to watch my nephew play, and we had to go to next door to Oceanside to go watch them play, because there they have 20 fields in one spot, you know? Uh, Carlsbad's got quite a few, um, and I asked the uh, city manager how many fields we have here, and I think we have like five or six maybe if that five um and this isn't exactly for for kids obviously this is for adults and that but uh, there needs to be an outlet so i mean i'm i'm not i've never played soccer myself so i don't know anything about it i was learning stuff uh, saturday watching those little guys go but um I, I know there's a great big population here that's looking for this type of uh, activity so um I'll make a motion that we approve the mitigated neg negative declaration to uh, construct a dog park, outdoor soccer arena, and children's playground, and the associated improvements for Bob Williamson Park. I'll second that, and I, and I also would say that I, I've gotten, over the years, a lot of calls from people. Um, there's a lot of crime in that park, and, and I've had some neighbors that called me and wanted, you know, could you just clean up the park and do something with it because there's a lot of crime and um, drugs and gangs and all sorts of problems in there. So this should clean that, clean that park up, in my opinion. So um, so I guess I, we have motion and a second. And so um, please cast your votes. Uh, 
That motion passes unanimously with um, Councilmember Rigby excused. So the next thing on our agenda is, we're almost there, oral communications. We don't have any speakers? No speakers tonight. So um, with that, then um, I will do my announcements, and then we'll see if everybody else has something to say. Um, the, uh, the comments here. Residents can learn about neighborhood safety and meet some of VISTA sheriff's deputies um, at the VISTA um, at the Vista Day with a Deputy event on Saturday, February 25th from 9 to noon at Shadow Ridge Park. It's a free family event um, and patrol and SWAT vehicles will be on display. Information is available online at cityofvista.com. Uh, the Vista Library is preventing, presenting Kaleidoscope Designing Unity, an art ex exhibit by students at Platt College of San Diego honoring Black History Month. The show runs February 27th in the library's community room. Tickets for the 2017 Moonlight Present season are on sale now, the series that Dr. Bronner's is helping to support. The shows include Rhythmic Circus, Abba Mania, the, Abbe, the Abba Tribute, and a tribute to Marvin Gaye. The ticket information is online at moonlightstage.com. The Only Losers, Only Losers Litter Group is recruiting volunteers for its cleanup this Sunday, February 19th from 11 to 2 at Brengle Terrace Park. Volunteers under 18 must be accompanied by an adult. You need gloves, trash bags, and litter pickers will be provided. So anybody that can help pick up litter in Brengle Terrace, that would be, be appreciated from 11 to 2 on, on Saturday. And then um, I'll just go on and say the only thing that um, John and I and uh, Councilmember um, Rigby attended Sandag retreat this, this um, last week. Um, and so it was th the most interesting part to me was the part about the driverless cars. And I'm just so excited because as a senior, I know someday in this not too far distant future, my kids are going to take my driver's license away. So I'm hoping for driverless cars to pick me up and take me places. So um, they say in the next five to ten years that the, um, the life is going to change as much as it changed when um, Henry Ford developed his car and it changed the whole life. How, how life is. They said in the next five to ten years you're going to see the same thing happen with um, driverless vehicles, trucks, buses, and cars. And so um, I'm kind of excited to see that. They said the technology is here. They have it all together right now. They have everything organized and they have like, I know Ann Arbor has a half of its city that's, um, they do that. And so it, it's coming. People think it won't be in their lifetime, and, but it will. It, it's, it's here. All it, they have all the technology. All they need is people to accept it and to test, you know, to do more testing. So anyway, that's that. And I'll pass that on to John and see if he has any comments. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the Sandag uh, retreat as well. Uh, most exciting part was the last day with the autonomous vehicles, as the mayor mentioned. Um, but what was really exciting is one of our companies from Vista was there to uh, represent Vista, Denso, yeah. uh, out of our business park. They were actually heading up the whole talk and they're very involved with the autonomous vehicles. So uh, great company, great uh, talk, and I learned a lot. Um, I did attend the regional planning uh, committee meeting at Sandag. Just wanted to, I guess, give props to Vista and our staff, especially. Um, we were one of the featured pro or, uh, projects that they showed there. They went ahead and uh, showed a lot of different projects here in San Diego County. Um, but even the, the mayor of Escondido commented on how nice our traffic circle looked and our art there. He said it looked like we were in Italy, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's ever been to Italy, but um, the, the bottom line is it was uh, recognized as being uh, very progressive, beautiful, and uh, inviting. So uh, thank you to staff uh, and congrats on that uh, recognition. And uh, I also would just like to uh, recognize uh, Deputy Salzman. Uh, we had an incident at my house, minor incident, but. He treated uh, my family very well and uh, treated it like uh, it was any other major crime or whatever. You know, I mean, I was just really impressed with uh, the deputy sheriff's uh, response. Uh, they didn't know who I was initially until I think he walked in the door and recognized me. And they were like, oh. Um, but, you know, uh, minor crime, but uh, anytime there's any kind of little crime at your house, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. It was a big deal to my son. So, uh, thank you. Deputy Mayor, down there? No comments tonight. No comments tonight. How about 
Councilmember Member Green. I always have something to say. Uh, number one, I want to thank everybody for just sticking around tonight. You especially in that beautiful red shirt. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, two things that I want to say. Number one, I want to give props to my public works department. What's up, Big Chuck? Um, your gentleman made this downpour that occurred in Vista so fabulous for the commuters of our town. There have been more lakes at a few of these intersections than, you know, over the years. And with this huge rain, I'm happy to say my little BMW did not get stuck in any thick puddles. So Public Works, props to you. You guys were ready for it. Hopefully this next storm coming we're ready for too. So great job, Public Works. And then I just wanted to give a shout out to our building department and our planning and our permit department. Um, I spoke with a gentleman by the name of Tori Walker, who is a local business owner. He does a lot of business with different cities, and he said that uh, that our you know permit building planning department is the standard of excellence, kind of in the county. So, as a new uh, public servant in this uh, community and on this dais, it just feels so good to have public employees who take pride in their job and represent our city well. So, thank you guys so much, and I'm sure I'll have much more props for all of you uh, as we move on. But so far, that's what I got. So, thank you guys, and have a great night. Happy Valentine's Day. And how about our city manager? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, apologize. Any voice? Do you have any voice left? <laughs> apologize for <laughs> my voice. Squeak I, it out. <laughs> I do want to say the, the lady in the back in the sparkly red shirt, she is with Tiffany's Soccer Club and uh, yeah. didn't know uh, the process to speak, but we will definitely invite her back um, when this item comes back to you. Uh, but I did want to recognize that she stayed for the meeting and is in support of the arena soccer. I uh, did want to let everybody know that the city offices and the library will be closed on Monday. Uh, in the observance of President's holiday. Uh, there will be no delay in the trash service though. And following up on uh, Councilman Green's comments about the rain, uh, Public Works did do a fantastic job. And with rain comes potholes. And so I will say if you see any potholes, we encourage residents to call the city at 760-639-6177 or access the Access Vista app online and report the problem. And happy Valentine's Day to everybody else. Thank you. How about City Attorney, Daryl Piper? Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. City Clerk? I want to remind everybody that we're doing our annual recruitment for commissions, boards, and committees. Applications are due March 23rd. Thank you. And happy Valentine's Day. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>